Welcome back. Well, uh, lots of conversation about what is going on at the moment in uh, Uyugbo local government area. We've got uh, Chidi Lloyd uh, joining us this morning. He's, of, uh, he's a lecturer in the uh, University of Nigeria, Enugu campus. We will also have uh, Mr. Richard Mokocha, who is a legal practitioner and also former chair of MBA in Omoko. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. But Mr. Lloyd, let's start off with you. There are lots of reactions that we read. They just keep asking questions uh, online. They're dotted with images, graphic images of what is going on. Different people have described what is happening there in different ways, which raises a lot of concern. So from your perspective, what is going on at the moment? Uh, Chamberlain, I want to thank you for having me on this program. Uh, uh, just like the program, the, the discussion you just interrogated with the Honorable Minister for Youth Affairs, uh, there are lots of fake news, lots of uncensored news going on or, or currently or about what is happening in Oibo. Uh, what exactly is happening in Oibo? Uh, the government of River State or any government what is on you, uh, you would not fold his arms and, and uh, watch urchins, watch, watch hyperloids take laws into their hands with the aim of maiming hardworking citizens of, of Nigeria. Uh, Chamberlain, why is anybody not interrogating uh, the, 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 the brutal murder of security personnel uh, who, whose only offense is that they are serving the country uh, and that these personnel have families, they have children who were killed in the most brutal manner and also incriminated. Now, there have been calls, uh, uh, several calls to the governor of River State on what is currently going on in Oibo. The, the only question to ask is whether the governor of River State is also the commander in chief of the armed forces. You know that the governor, no governor, no, the governor of River State or any other governor in Nigeria cannot call out the army for any, 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 any purpose. So if Military personnel, if the, the, the people will be, will be so courageous to, to kill a, a soldier, and of course you know that the soldiers will not fold it, their arms to uh, at ensuring that such people who perpetuate this kind of injustice are brought to book. And that is what is going on currently in Oyibo. It's housekeeping so that other citizens can live peacefully. Nobody has any right, nobody. No matter the no matter the the, the, the the name under which they, they, they operate has right to inflict pain on anybody in Nigeria. You you have a situation where some somebody in a, in an unknown country places a bounty on the head of a governor of River State, a governor of Yes uh, Wicked's mold, a hundred million kill kill bring Governor Wicked's head and pick up hundred million hundred million naira cash. And what, what bothers me is that the, no, no governor from the Southeast has condemned this, 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 this audacity. So when, what is happening is not a retaliation. The governor of River State has said at different fora that everybody, including Igbos, are free to live in River State, do business, and pay his, pay, pay his taxes. So that All is right. exactly what we are doing. Okay, what the governor, we, the governor is doing. we'll come back to this uh, when we return from the break in just a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Well, Mr. Lloyd, when you say housekeeping, to so different people, I mean, to, for, for the military, for instance, it could mean something different. So part of the question there is, well, yes, the group has been prescribed, but whatever happens to the law taking its course, are people... Are they encouraging the security agencies to ensure that if anyone is caught in that light, then the law will have to take its course, as opposed to images of you know, people who have been killed in, in this regard circulating all over the place? Well, uh, Chaplain, please, I do, not want, I do not want us to be misunderstood. When I said housekeeping, what it means is that security agencies have the capacity to fish out the perpetrators of the heinous crime that 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 happened in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a country where people, citizens can freely hunt policemen and kill them, not just that, incriminate them. So the, the security agencies will stop at nothing to fish 
such 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 auctions out. That's what I meant by housekeeping. Uh, for us in River State, I'm sure that people were shocked that the state did not go up in flames uh, like like other states. But people had called to find out whether we do not have uh, warehouses where palliatives were stopped. The answer is simple. The Bible is clear when he said that when the righteous rule, the people will rejoice. That's exactly what is going here, going on here. With the with the with the with the, with the litany of developmental projects going on uh, uh, across the state, no citizen of River State. What is with onion will want to to distract the government from what it's doing on the seventh of on the seventh of this November, the Honorable Minister for Transportation uh, will be in Portaco to commission the Rebisi Bridge, and shortly thereafter there will be there will be a floodgate of commissioning that will open that will be opened in River State, and that is what we want here. We do not want anybody who has any any primordial sentiment to bring such madness into River State. There is no room for such people. We only have room for law-abiding citizens who will come here, do business, and pay us taxes. That is what we want in River State. So that's what I meant by housekeeping. And of course, the minister, the minister whom you just took on the program, have been interrogating the issue of fake news. All the pictures you see from Oyibo uh, are like have been likened to the pictures of the Lakey 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 told the shooting, where those who were alleged to have been shot, have all suddenly resurrected. So that is the, the, the danger in this uncensored, uncensored uh, uh, news, news media that will now have a, a, a social media. And I joined the minister uh, to say that we urgently call on the National Assembly to please pass a law that will not impede uh, freedom of speech, but will, will take care of some of these, these uh, uh, SSCs mm. by people who who, who profit from troublemaking. Well, to the best of your knowledge, have there been arrests as a result of the activities that uh, took place at Oibo local government area? Well, in as much as I would want to uh, answer that question, the, the police, or neither the police nor the army report to me. Uh, and uh, I am not, uh, I'm not, I'm not domiciled in Oibo. But I think that uh, uh, so there the, the must, the must be some kind of arrest have been going on. Okay, well, Mr. Richard Wokocha joins us as well uh, on this matter. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. So, what kind of information are you getting about the operations going on in Oyibo local government area? Okay, I thought I thought we had him, but uh, can we do we have him first? Let's be sure of that. Mr. Wakocha, can you hear us? Okay, well uh, there you go. Uh, it's not happening yet. Well, look, I need <laughs> I need to get clear communication well, on well, this one to well, see. Well, okay, well okay. there you go. So, Mr. Wakocha, did you get the question? Um, yes, about the housekeeping. Uh, in terms of what kind of information are you getting now? Because uh, the concerns about perhaps what is the current situation at the moment? Well, uh, you will expect that in this situation, information, uh, real time information will be somewhat difficult because the area is uh, closed because of the military operation going on. Uh, but certainly, we have. Um, uh, what began as a bad situation and uh, will still be somewhat a bad situation. I think uh, the hoodlums uh, probably felt that uh, what they were witnessing, the well-organized protest by well-meaning uh, youths in this country, uh, signified for them a uh, collapse of the Nigerian state, and they thought they could take advantage of that to uh, bring down everything. And so the acts which clearly challenged the sovereignty of the nation uh, such as burning of police stations, killing of security officers, uh, burning of the court, the high court complex in uh, Oyibo and all that, uh, clearly indicated the thought the condition was over. Uh, but that was to the excess on their part. Uh, but you have a situation now, too, where uh, an unrestrained and unregulated military action is also going on. Uh, it's clear that you can't allow the situation that... Uh, that uh, prevailed before now to continue, and you need to call it to order. Uh, but there is always the challenge that when 
uh, matters of strength and actions such as military actions are going on without regulation, uh, there will be the likelihood that uh, some eggs will be cracked, uh, even if they are not used for the omelette. And that's the complaint that uh, uh, you are hearing in the streets. But the situation from uh, those who are in Oyubo, uh, as, as we get to hear from them from time to time, it's not looking as bad as it's painted uh, in the social media. There are no corpses lying around the streets and uh, all that. Uh, from what we hear from those who are there. Uh, for, for ourselves, we can't get into that area, and so we can't give you eyewitness account. Well, but Prof, uh, looking at that action itself of what you have described as the military um, presence in the okay. local government, yes. what do you make of it? Well, it signifies uh, the occurrence of something serious. The situation in Oyibu called for a little more than uh, regular action. Uh, you have a situation where, as I said, official uh, institutions of the government were burned down. Even markets were burned down, and uh, there were victims here and there. As you notice around the country, uh, the looting and pavering was no longer uh, limited to government institutions. Citizens were as well at risk, and there was serious need to restore order in that place. And uh, I doubt that it could have been done uh, in any way, considering that uh, police stations had been burned down and all that. I, I doubt that it could have been done in any other way, except to bring in superior firepower to um, stop those who are doing what they were doing and restore peace in the area. Would you say then that the action of the military in putting their men on the ground there at Oibo local government is in tandem or at variance with the executive order that's still keeping Oyibo local government under that curfew that the government of the state has pronounced? I wouldn't think uh, it's at variance. Uh, remember that the army is part of the um, enforcement uh, systems of the state. Uh, by state, I mean the Nigerian state. And uh, what they are doing is in tandem, I believe, with the effort that has been made by the state. Uh, in keeping that area somewhat uh, locked down to activities such as uh, what the area was experiencing. I, I don't think it's a variance, uh, because I think they are all geared at uh, stopping the madness that was going on in Oyo and uh, possibly bringing them to book. I have listened to the statement issued by the uh, Nigerian army, uh, in which they said they are trying to recover arms that are uh, taken from their colleagues who were killed, six soldiers and uh, four policemen, and those that were taken from the police stations. Dr. Lloyd, uh, let me ask you, uh, does there have to be that sort of lockdown? Because the, those who were supposed to go about their genuine businesses, they feel concerned as well. And uh, shouldn't people be allowed who have genuine things to do around there to go in and out? Because if they identify people who they search for, others should be allowed to move, don't you think? My, my heart goes out for those who... Uh, who, whose businesses may have been, been, been uh, impeded. But you must, you must understand that. Uh, Professor Wankocha, just hold on a minute. It's for Dr. Lloyd to respond to, please. Go ahead, Dr. Lloyd. Uh, nobody, nobody will do any genuine business. Nobody will do any genuine business in a state of lawlessness. So when these type of things happen, uh, government must be proactive and take steps. That is why we call for intelligence gathering even from citizens. We, they, they, these persons, these characters live, live, live among neighbors. So when you see that their actions will one way or the other uh, affect you, it is important that you raise alarm and inform the security personnel. Uh, no policeman anywhere uh, should be treated with such, with such disdain. Uh, 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 imagine a, a, a country without policemen. Imagine a country without law enforcement agencies. A time comes when even these, these urchins will require uh, to be protected. So we must not demean our police. Uh, I agree that there may be some bad eggs in the police, but there are some very good gentlemen and officers of the police force. Some of us are from, uh, uh, have relatives who, are, who have uh, served meritoriously and distinguished themselves as policemen, or even as uh, military officers. 
So nobody has any right in this country to talk down on the police. If you have issues with any policeman, you are free. And these issues are not also peculiar to the police. We have people who are corrupt in the university system. We have persons who are corrupt in government. We have persons who are corrupt even in churches. We have seen churches where pastors come under fist coffers uh, to fight uh, over one issue or the other in, in the church. So it is not limited to the police alone. So, and th that was why the River State Governor uh, took the bold step by, by compensating the families of, 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 of policemen and soldiers who fell uh, 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 victim of this, of this dastard act. By and also undertaking to rebuild this, the, the facilities that were burnt. And now no government, uh, no, these are not, these are not uh, 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 very good times for us, especially uh, with regard to finances. So any infrastructure that has been gotten now to be replaced, it will take a toll on, 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 on the coffers of government. So this is not the time to begin to replace bond properties. This is the time to cherish the ones that we have. And that money that will, the River State government will spend in the rebuilding of those facilities would have been channeled to the, construct, to the provision of other amenities that we, we, we crave for in the state. So it's unfortunate uh, what is going on, but the, house, the housekeeping is, is long overdue. No, Does that... the constitution is clear. Nobody yeah. can raise any flag of any nature. If you have issues, please sort it out within the confines of your state. You cannot come here and, and, and want to annex River State and begin to so much to change the names of communities that exist in River State. When a governor has sworn uh, 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 taking the oath to protect life and property, and that is what uh, uh, Governor Wige is doing. Unfortunately, he doesn't control the army, neither does he control the police. I'm sure that they are performing their civic duty. Yeah, but, but, but when you say that, um, I mean, no one can do legitimate business, it may come across as though, wait a minute, does that then justify trampling on other people's rights for the sins of some? No, 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 no. Chamberlain no, is, is, is a state of lawlessness. Like, like you and I share the same sentiment. You recall that uh, when the NSAS protest, when the NSAS protest started, it, it was started by well-meaning individuals, right? We, we saw the agitation, it was calm, it was peaceful. All of a sudden, some hoodlums hijacked it and now started uh, uh, carrying out their own uh, uh, war against the elites. What I see coming is some kind of war against the elites. Uh, we have a group of people who have uh, 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 declared themselves as, as renegades, who will go about attacking government officials, both home and abroad. And, and no, we cannot do this. You do, you do, what, what, what would, what, how would it describe, how would you describe NSAS movement to not include the burning of houses of private citizens? It has left the, the poor view of protest to now criminality. And every gov no government will stand and watch criminals uh, 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 hold sway. So, but it, for those who are, who are law abiding, it is just for a while. It is also in our interest that, that the bad eggs amongst us be fished out and dealt with according to law. Well, to the best of your knowledge, well, there, first of all, there are those who believe that it was the governor of River State. You already said that the governor does not control the army. The constitution makes that clear. But then there are those who believe that the governor may have called for or did call for the army to come to help, especially in that Oyibo local government area. And some believe as a result of that, um, there were some fatalities. To the best of your knowledge, was it the governor of River State that called for the military? You, you, you said, you said, uh, I agree. I, I, I agree with what you said that I said that the governor, the governor does not control the army. And I'm sure you also know, you as a very seasoned journalist know that the governor does not have the instruments to call out the army. Our rules are clear. It is only the commander in chief or anybody having the imprimatur of his powers that can call out the army. Uh, if they, even if let's assume but not concede that the governor raised an alarm, all the governor can do is raise an alarm. The military or security agencies know when to move in and when not to move in, especially when such alarm is coming from someone who cannot 
uh, uh, call them out to perform any duty. And recall uh, that the, the, the governor of River State has not had a very pleasant experience with due respect with these agencies. I do not know why people are now associating the governor with uh, such a, a camaraderie now with the police and the army. Uh, Professor Wokocha, the, this conversation seems endless and various state governments are, you know, handling and are approaching these issues in various ways. What kind of intervention would you think uh, appropriate, especially in the context of River State at this moment? For Professor Wokocha, please. It's for Professor Wokocha. Please go ahead, Professor. Uh, all right. Um, uh, first, I think a state faced with this kind of situation needs to do government. Moment, Dr. Lloyd, the question is for Professor Wokocha. Please let uh, Professor Wokocha you know, answer this one. We'll get back to you shortly. Go ahead, Prof. All right. Uh, the, a situation like this calls for um, serious commitment on the part of government. First, uh, you need to do everything possible to ensure that citizens are safe. Um, like a follow-up to your last question, if citizens are not safe, we can't talk about business, we can't even talk about going to the hospital, because it's not even safe for you to get to the hospital if you have need for it. So all that requires to be done to support the police and relevant agencies uh, to be able to bring calm and uh, security into the area needs to be done and government needs to be fully committed to doing that uh, because i mean the primary task of government is to uh, secure lives and property of citizens so i think government needs to work with every relevant agent uh, to ensure first that those who are responsible for this because uh, as the situation appears it will appear that the bulk of the people who were responsible for the mayhem in Obi Oyibo, uh, we are people who were largely not from the state and so government needs to do everything possible, work with relevant agencies to ensure that such elements, such hoodlums are kept out of the region. Uh, this is the only way to get people in that region uh, to get free again. Because under what was going on and under what is going on now, people cannot be free. So the operation will be necessary, yes, but it needs to be as fast and prompt as possible and it needs to be as comprehensive as possible to ensure that in the shortest possible time, the elements are rooted out of that place uh, to enable life return to normal in the, in the local government. Beyond the um, intervention that you talked about, is the activities, the activities that gave rise to this whole issue in Oyibo and a number of other places, but Oyibo specifically, uh, it talks about the, um, the activities of members of IPOB, which has been pro proscribed as far as River State is concerned. Are you concerned that there, haven't, or there may or may not have been arrests of people who perpetrated these criminalities? Uh, it's, it's very possible that uh, there may have been some uh, level of arrest, but it, it will be difficult to speak uh, with precision uh, because unless you hear uh, from press briefing uh, issued by the police or the relevant agencies, uh, it will be difficult. You will only be guessing. But I think that uh, with what has gone on uh, for the length of time that this operation has been on, even if it's 24 hours only or 48 hours, definitely they would have made some gain and they would have arrested some. And I believe that those arrested will be given useful information as to the direction to which the operation should look uh, to be able to get those who are involved. From your perspective, Prof, how far-reaching do you see the impact of what has happened in Oyibo and a number of other places in River State and how soon do you think life can get back to normal? I believe it is far-reaching. It is far-reaching enough. Um, more needs to be done, uh, this time not in military form. Uh, more needs to be done to get the communities in Oyibo local government uh, to work strictly with relevant agencies to ensure that whenever they perceive these elements uh, coming in to create problems and have up for them, uh, that they do something to enable security agencies, prevent them from doing so. Uh, that needs to be done urgently. And then uh, I think there are a few things that have been complained about, you know, Yibo Road and the, all that. Uh, effort needs to be directed towards uh, ensuring that such amenities are uh, fixed and running uh, to enable the people uh, have full confidence and continue with uh, their activities.
in the state. All right, Dr. Lloyd, just as we wrap up on this one, um, in, in terms of the prescribing of IPOB, I mean, many are asking, that it was there detailed investigation that indicated that it was indeed that group that carried out all of those actions? And then, was there any need to re-proscribe them since they were already proscribed? You might need to unmute uh, so such that we can hear you. You sorry. You you recall that the, the governor of River State isn't the first person to prescribe uh, 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 the IPOP. They recall that sometime in 2018, the Southeast governors, all of them together, have also prescribed IPOP from operating within his jurisdiction. The federal government had also declared them as a terrorist organization. So what the River State Governor did was to bring to the fore uh, uh, the fact that uh, this organization do not exist. Now, you asked if there, were, there was an investigation. Generally, that you will, you will be shocked to hear that uh, the, these characters had gone to some parts of OIMO to hoist their flag. You know, so what do they, that, every eye could see that. And uh, they also, a native doctor was also arrested. A native doctor uh, was arrested who had set up a shrine with uh, IPOB, IPOB uh, uh, flags and, and insignia and paraphernalia uh, uh, that are frightening in order to continue uh, to, to extort money from, from well-meaning citizens who are doing genuine business in Oyibo under the, the, the promise of one uh, President Donald Trump coming to their aid in no distant time. All this misinformation must stop. And no government, no government will fold his hands. And rivers people are happy. Rivers people will resist, will resist, or albeit within the law, uh, any attempt to distract our governor. Uh, we are happy with what is going on. Uh, 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 like I've always said at different fora, I have not seen governors uh, walk the way Governor Wige is walking, especially in their second tenure. So we will not, there is no time left. Every time now, every minute counts in River State. And here is the governor that has promised that no project started by him uh, 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 will, will, will be left uncompleted. So all hands are on deck as to assuring that this governor delivers on the dividends of good governance, which we are currently enjoying in River State. So we will not be, well, that's why River State was peaceful to the chagrin of the tractors of the state. It's because of, uh, it's because of the good works. Eh? So, so, so we are not, we are not part of here. We can't be intimidated. Uh, we cannot be intimidated by any group of, or any person or group of persons. All right, then, Dr. Chidi so Lloyd. The has our support. All right, uh, Dr. Chidi Lloyd is a lecturer in the Faculty of Law, University of Nigeria. We have also had uh, Professor Richard Mokocha, an associate professor of public law, River State University. Gentlemen, thank you both for talking to us today. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, all right, uh, some feedback coming through now. And then uh, perhaps we might just go ahead and start off with this one, which uh, was sent in by, um, I see, King Solomon. No, 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 go to the next. Okay, well, Carlo says, listening to the Minister for Youth this morning, I have never heard any youth, I never heard of any youth in the East or South South that had benefited from these programs. I feel majority... In the north and the west, well, okay. Well, uh, I hope you'll uh, well, see what I happens I think it speaks to what you said about the coinage of the communication. Oh, Very okay. Important. Well, this one is from Adekunle Julia. It says, I watched and heard you speak on channels television about setting up a help desk for the Nigerian youths to oh. call. How do you intend to do justice to the selection of the 50 youths across the country? Well, Ono also says, look, many young people have crossed the mark of age of 35 and cannot benefit from this program. Aren't they also part of the suffering population in Nigeria? The conventional banks will not give them any loan. Victor O says, most of the groups the Honorable Minister mentioned have never heard of before. Instead of the program trying to clip the social media, why not use the same media to promote these groups more? 
Well, this one from Caleb says uh, 500,000 volunteers were sent to streets amidst COVID-19 in June with our EXI package, and 300,000 of them had their device withheld. James Ogujimi says our government never announced all these programs mentioned. Why not make it known to the public? Send them platforms to benefit from all the programs. Uh, Elizabeth says, please leverage the social media um, to disseminate all these fantastic projects. It is very easy. Your projects are, are strange to a lot of youths. If they are really in existence, it should be out there on Facebook, or Twitter, Instagram. You know where to find the youth. If these projects is real, they will help you tell your success. I think he mentioned that. That's yeah. They are leveraging uh, the online well. platforms to disseminate this one. So I, I think I heard him say that. Global Winston says,